Hello, everybody. I'm Roy Cohen. I am this week's host of the Community Forum show, and it's a pleasure to be here with some great people. The beginnings of the Committee for Diversity and Inclusion. We have with us today Dr. Erdem Ural. Hi, Roy. Welcome. Uh, Reverend Mary Perry from the United Church of Christ Church in Stoughton, and Karen McDonald. She is uh, the Stoughton Youth Commission and the Council on Aging Director. Did I get all the titles right? You did. We did. Thank you. We're going, we have a very timely subject that we're going to be talking about uh, today. Um, but first, some definitions. The defini definition of the word inclusion, uh, it's the act of including, the state of being included, uh, something that is included. And we also have another one, definition of diversity. The inclusion of individuals representing more than one national origin, color, religion, socioeconomical strat stratum, sexual or orientation, etc., diversity in the workplace. I think those are lending themselves to the discussion that we're going to have today. Um, it's also, also a point of difference. Um, let's start off with the um, need for the committee as it stands. Um, is this something that is reactionary to incidents that have been taking place in and around Stoughton, or is it something you put together in anticipation? Maybe we can start off with you, Dr. Earl. Well, I think it's, uh, it goes both ways. Uh, we did have a diverse, effectively a diversity uh, committee long time ago. I don't remember. I was uh, maybe 20 years ago. No, no Place it, for Hate? Yeah, yeah right. it was, it was called, called 2004. No Place for Hate. I wonder what happened to that. It was, uh, it was a hot issue then. They put up signs every place and the signs that are still there have, like the committee, they faded out. So um, the um, No Place for Hate group, um, Just I just want to do a shout out. Um, we were the first No Place for Hate group. Uh, Stoughton was the no, first No Place for Hate group um, in, in the, the state, in the, in the country and in the state. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, due to different um, uh, timeliness or in different people's interests and different things like that, uh, um, the community uh, the, the group itself had um, kind of waned. Uh, they did a lot of potlucks um, or different things like that and did a lot of um, programming uh, that talked about diversity, all many different, many different people, things. Uh, we used to do a big Martin Luther King um, uh, potluck um, that everybody from different countries would bring all the different foods and we had it in the cafeteria. And so we thought that this was a really good time to um, uh, bring this forward again. Um, and when through the ACLU, um, we weren't able, it's not, there's no place for hate, doesn't exist um, kind of anymore in any of that form, but uh, the residents of Stoughton um, were still interested in forming a committee that looked at diversity. Um, You're and, talking recently. Yep, um, so we, um, so many of the p f founding people of No Place for Hate came. We had a couple of exploratory meetings um, to see what interest people had. Um, because a lot of people started calling Pat Basler, who had been part of the original No Place for Hate, no Place for Hate group, I'm asking if it was still active. Um, so w there was a lot of interest in that, and so a lot of people came. We had a first meeting to see who was, who was active, um, and we really feel like that both, that one of the things that um, we found is that people uh, look at their differences more than they look at the things that are the same or the things that connect us. Um, and I think that... Uh, Why do they do that? Why do they look at the differences? Well, um, I think that it's just human nature a little bit. Um, I think that you have to be uh, taught and people have to kind of learn those things. It's just kind of our, it's our, it's our human nature to group with like people. Um, and so at the surface, you don't, on the surface, people don't necessarily know that they're alike. Um, so I think that it's just a really important people, but when we talk about diversity, you know, it, just even take my, my position as Council and Aging Director and Youth Commission Director, um, the perspectives of people who are aging are different than the, what might be for young parents or kids themselves, but there's lots of crossover that they can do and work together. So for, for me, inclusion not only happens for age and, uh, not all race and all those things, but it's also age. It's um, 
being able to talk to people with different views and to not automatically to dismiss other people's views as wrong, you know, and I think that we saw a lot of that in the election, that we think that we're right and people think they're wrong and other people think that they're right and other people are wrong. So just being able to open up that dialogue um, we think is really important. Um, me personally, I think that Stoughton's a very inclusive um, community. I think that it's very welcoming to um, lots of different people and I think that we don't do a good job kind of promoting that um, as well. So I think that for me that's one of the important things. So we've had a couple of meetings. This is, uh, and I'm going to let other people talk, um, but we're, we're always looking for people. I know that it doesn't look like we're a diverse group, uh, the three of us sitting here. Well, I'm but, diverse. <laughs> yeah, um, Erdem's, uh, he's, he's diverse. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that does not reflect actually the, the makeup of the people who have been coming to the group right. um, as well. Mm -hmm. this, these are just, we are just the people who could come to this show today mm -hmm. um, yeah. on when, that. when did this committee uh, actually form itself? Um, it was I like February or March, is, uh, March, I think. March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get political. Okay. But do you think that the, uh, the last election had anything to do with how people think about other people? Absolutely. May I speak to that? Um, sure. We'll let you. I, it's been one of my, I've noticed that um, people across our country, I think, have felt emboldened um, over this year to um, denigrate those that they feel are different from themselves and to express hatred in ways that we have not seen before. Um, and that troubles me. I don't think that makes for a good community and I think everyone would agree with that. Um, did it all of a sudden happen or did, did the winter cause these I things? I think the winter caused these winter. things. The, the, yes, that ha happened since the first of the year. That's my opinion, yep. And so I think it's important for us to take a stand to, to, to let people know in a public way that this is, Stoughton is not the kind of community where those kind of things are going to be allowed to take place. That we believe in love, we believe in inclusion, we believe that all people are welcome regardless of their race, their socioeconomic background, their sexual orientation. Um, we're all more alike than different and we need to unite, as Karen said, around that that um, we have in common. I've been in Stoughton now since 1968. It's hard to believe when you look at me that yeah. I'm that old. But I, I've, um, I've really noticed very little in the way of changes in the composition of this town. It's, it's a great mix. Um, there's not, I, I don't see, uh, like in some communities, you'll have a, an ethnic group that'll all gang and live in one particular area and keep themselves separate from others. I, I think that it, um, it's, it's a great mix, and it's, it's been that way right along, and, and uh, hopefully it'll continue. But uh, I, I think something like what we heard just recently, and I don't want to date the show, but uh, the declaration of uh, transgender people no longer are welcome in the, in the uh, service is, is a terrible thing, and oh. it's just going to create more and more problems. I mean, anybody who's, you know, for me, anybody who's willing to serve our country um, should do and, it. And, right. and is going to protect our and protect um, America's freedoms, um, which includes being, you know, for as much as we hate to think about people using free speech um, as a way to criticize or to make people smaller, um, it is our right under the, you know, under the Constitution and under the Bill of Rights for us to be able to to do those things. Right. Um, and so you, you can't have it both ways. We can't all just say, you know what I'm saying, like free speech is a protection. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that when exactly what you're talking about, like I think that one of the things that Stoughton, one of the things from the diversity group that we really wanted to talk about um, is that we are a welcoming community. Um, you know, you think about um, uh, Stoughton has always welcomed um, immigration and been open to that. You, you know, think about the four Portuguese clubs, uh, the, right. three, the three Portuguese clubs that we have in town, um, how, you know, and then just as immigrants happen, immigration happens, that is you know, like uh, us showing that we're a welcoming place um, is good for our community. It's good for economics. It's good for all of those things. Like people want to live in places that are diverse and are tolerant um, so that they can bring their kids up in a way that that it's, that it's the norm to see people of different colors, different religions, than the exception. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, I mean, so we, we have some, 
uh, we're kind of still in the in the forming stages. Um, so the Youth Commission and the Council on Aging are kind of helping um, to sponsor it and to, um, to, to move it along, but it's really a community-led um, based initiative um, that's happening for us. Uh, we put up a, a slide that says that uh, we need more volunteers. Stoughton celebrates diversity, and that's the Committee for Diversity and Inclusion. And if you're interested in taking part and helping out or volunteering or whatever, contact the Stoughton Youth Commission or the Council on Aging if you're interested. And the phone number is 781-344-8882. Now, if somebody sees this and uh, you can like us on, uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, Stoughton Diversity and Inclusion, if they're going to call in the, over the next couple of weeks, who are they going to ask for? Uh, they can ask for me or they can ask for Teresa Tapper. Okay, um, and Teresa's very involved. Yep, and Teresa's really involved as well. Uh, okay, the one thing I forgot to do at the beginning of the show is uh, uh, I want to show the diversity of the group that's sitting before me uh, and say, what is your background? Sir, we'll start with you. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm an immigrant to begin with. I finished, uh, I'm from Turkey. I finished uh, college in Turkey and uh, I was the top student of my class and uh, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, gave me a scholarship to come to U.S. and uh, do a Ph.D. in uh, any university. Mm -hmm. So I was fortunate. And then uh, after I graduated, I uh, came to, uh, like, my first job was in uh, uh, Norwood, Massachusetts. And I made uh, Stoughton my home uh, because uh, uh, the... Um, uh, taxes were low. It was close proximity to Boston, and, uh, and you knew I was here. And I knew you were <laughs> here. Uh, so, um, and you've been an involved uh, member of the community. Yeah, I have served as different uh, committees. Uh, so I was the uh, on the school committee. Uh, served as a school committee chair. One of the more uh, quiet members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tend to speak out when I, if yes, I feel. Yes, noticed that. You know, you knew that. And I am a town meeting member. I worked on a finance committee. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I have been active in the community mostly because uh, I have two young boys. Uh, one is uh, 11 and the other one is 15. Mm -hmm. That's a good start. Yeah. Reverend Mary Perry? Yes, that's right. Um, I'm the pastor of the First Congregational Church of Stoughton, United Church of Christ. We're located across from Halloran Park. Um, I am in my fifth year there as pastor, and one thing we strive to do as a church is to um, publicly acclaim our welcome for people with all different backgrounds. And um, some of you may have seen on our Facebook page, we have, um, uh, and it's also on our church website, a, a, a sign that some church members made that in colors of all different, all different colors, it says, we welcome people who are different, and I can't think now of all the different categories we have, but then at the, at the bottom of the sign it says, love lives here, and that's a value that we really try to live into. Um, I'm also president of the Stoughton Clergy Association, and oh, we've been, um, so you don't know everything about me, <laughs> Artem. Um, we had been talking about, um, we still thought of it as a no place for hate, organization, but we had been talking about that over the winter. And so it seems like this, the formation of this group was just really um, formed organically, because we were thinking about it, other people in the town were thinking about it. I contacted Pat Basler, because as I think one of you said, she was um, instrumental in forming the other group. Um, and she said, other people in the town are thinking about this too. So we all, it all kind of happened at the same time. So I think that's a, a good sign that there is a need for a group like ours in the community. So I look forward to um, continuing with this work. I think it's really, really important. Good. Erdem, uh, before we get to uh, the young lady at the end, you want to explain who's in the uh, photo that we're looking at? Uh, this is uh, our group. Uh, we had, uh, walked at the uh, July 4th parade. So uh, I'm not in the picture because I'm the one who took the picture. Uh -huh. And uh, so we had a wonderful time, get a wonderful response uh, from the uh, uh, people in the, uh, you know, watching the parade. But before uh, we go any further, I also wanted to talk about the previous question. 
which is the uh, you know timing uh, of uh, this group. I think uh, you know we all love the uh, old uh, diversity group, which was the no place for hate. Uh, but uh, there has been, uh, like you mentioned, uh, there has been uh, uh, external and internal uh, problem. One was the uh, U.S. Uh, presidential election. I noticed uh, a slide uh, in the in the uh, you know inclusive values throughout the campaign, not just after uh, January, but. Uh, uh, November, even uh, before that, uh, you know, things were going downhill. Uh, people were, the politicians were trying to make, uh, uh, differentiate themselves from the other group and they're trying to uh, um, target certain uh, uh, voter groups. So th it's unfortunate that uh, they took the positions they did. And then internally in town, uh, we had a uh, few uh, issues with uh, you know, anti-Semitism or uh, Islamophobia. Um, so th I think that those were uh, in uh, November 2016. Um, and then, uh, what was the third one? Oh, then uh, we also, you know, all this uh, external political environment made us change our values uh, in town too. And uh, we end up, ended up having a divisive politics in the town to the level of uh, hostility among groups. I mean, we are all neighbors here, uh, so we should be tolerant to each other, particularly for uh, opinions. You know, if mm -hmm. you have an opinion, I'd love to hear your opinion. So I, I think that precipitated the, uh, those three things uh, precipitated no the it. timing. No doubt about it. And I Sharon, think you, you uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, um, I was just going to say, I think that one of the things that um, um, just, again, in the nature of news, and I think that you, the, that um, Community Forum and all, lots of the different local shows um, talk about all the good things that are happening. That's but, our intent. Uh, and I think that that's a fantastic thing, but I think that in just, again, as news media, you know, you take the little things that go wrong, you know, the exception to the rule, um, and you hear all about it, but you don't hear about all the things that are happening kind of on a, on a regular. That's what's selling newspapers. Uh, correct. You know, like, and, I, and, and I'm not saying everybody doesn't need to be educated, but you know, like, if you think about um, uh, the diversity in the schools or different things like that and how well the kids get along most of the time, um, those, are re those are really fantastic things. So we have, you know, so on our committee, we have people from the schools. You know, we have people who speak... Um, many different languages who have different se sexual orientations and even you know uh, people who are Portuguese but people who are also Brazilian but they both speak Portuguese um, you know people who are African-American people who you know so all different all different people are interested uh, and all different ages are interested um, as well so um, I think that we want to celebrate the good news that happens as well and make sure that we are um, uh, making sure that those things happen as well. So I think that it's, you know, it's in response, but I think it's a it's a proactive thing as well. It's mm -hmm. uh, um, so I just wanted to do that. So, but when you talk about immigrants and people's uh, wh what the thing about, so um, I'm first generation um, from an Im Im immigrant family. So my parents immigrated here when um, uh, my mom was pregnant with me. Mm -hmm. um, but you wouldn't know that by the color of my skin um, or my Boston accent. Um, about how, you know what I'm saying, like, but um, many of those things and how I grew up, um, you know, my family definitely talked about, like, oh, those American kids as opposed to uh, us uh, growing up and different things like that. So you, you don't realize, you know, what, what divides us and what put, puts us together. So right. um, I am the director of the Youth Commission and the Council on Aging. Um, and for me, one of the most important things is healthy communities help families to raise healthy, strong kids. And that's, our, well, that's one of our goals as the Youth Commission is to assist uh, parents in their already hard jobs to do that. But healthy communities and communities where people feel connected, um, they're protective factors. They help our kids um, make good decisions. Everything from um, using drugs to, you know, um, being tolerant, all of those things. Um, and then the same with for the elderly that the more connected you are to the community, the more that you are able to uh, know your neighbors uh, instead of having social isolation. 
those are gonna those are what constitute a good and long life mm -hmm. um, where people are connected to one another. Um, so for me, from the Council on Aging um, and the Youth Commission, it, it's a natural fit to want to make sure that our community is as strong as they um, as it can be, and for us to really know about the issues that are happening. Um, you know that people in our community are getting deported. Um, that people in um, you know, face the, you know what I'm saying, like the immigrants in our community both um, are very w nervous about that. And about the deporting? About the deportation, about, you know what I'm saying, like um, ICE, you know what I'm saying, like all of those, Homeland Security, all of those things. Um, and we need to be able to support them in, in ways that we can. And, and for us to think of it as us and not us and them. You know, so that's one of the things that I think that's a really important piece of that. Well, that was very interesting. Do you think that um, we'll ever get back to the way it should be? I mean, I, that may, may be a tough question, but I think all this time that we're spending hating each other, not us in particular, but is there a way to get back at it? If you're talking over in the Middle East, kids are taught to hate the people from Israel. Uh, they're brought up that way. How do you undo all of that? Well, I, I would actually say that I, I would actually say that the Stoughton schools are doing a, a, a fantastic job. If you think about all the, there's more than 21 languages spoken at Sto in the Stoughton schools alone. Really? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Portuguese, Cape Verdean, Haitian, Arabic, um, uh, Hebrew. Uh, there's, Whatever. It's, I mean, I, I can't. You know, like that yeah. on the thing, but. Um, I think that, that, and that's one of our goals here, is like I think that one of the things is that um, making sure that um, the town meeting um, boards and commissions are all represent who they're, the, who live in Stoughton. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a goal of many of the people who want, who have like formed a little subcommittee um, kind of around that um, to just to make sure that, um, uh, that we are represent, representative. Um, I think what you guys are doing is fantastic. Um, you're, you're getting people involved. I think with uh, the recent elections, and we have a new town moderator, he seems to be generating a lot of excitement and getting new people involved. Um, I think that's a good start. Um, there's uh, maybe, or you're, uh, you can take care of this uh, slide. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, uh, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we are a new committee. And uh, we have a huge number of people that came to our first meeting. So we typically meet uh, once a month. And uh, where, do you, where do you meet? Usually, I think it has always been, well, the first one was uh, somewhere else. But uh, we usually meet now at the uh, senior center or uh, youth center. Uh, so we had, well, how many would you say, Karen? 50 maybe? Yeah, maybe um, more. Yeah, we've had, um, and again, because of the summertime, but we've had uh, on an average between thirty, um, between twenty and th twenty and forty people. Um, the, first, the first meeting was like, uh, I think it was more well, than like fifty. Four, yeah, it was a good mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good mix. Um, so you have a new committee. You don't have any ground rules uh, set. Um, we want to include everybody in the committee. So what? Um, and also when you talk about uh, bigotry versus uh, free speech, uh, not all people agree on all the things. You know, like I may be uh, um, in one group, I may be totally uh, open-minded, uh, but in, an other, uh, in another subject, you know, people may have uh, prejudice. Mm -hmm. So uh, we sort of, we are still struggling with that. How do we include everybody? Uh, how do we all uh, be friends? So uh, uh, Karen and um, uh, Teresa, uh, they did some kind of uh, focusing uh, exercises, uh, you know, to try to figure out where the interest lies. So if we could have that slide back, Gina. Um, we have, uh, we went through uh, identified, you know, which, which area would you like to work on? So uh, there were, uh, a lot of uh, people, the second item is the events and activities, which are the uh, party guys like me. Uh, so uh, there, is, uh, there is interest in, uh, in that uh, activity. So we have a very nice group, very active, engaging group, and that's the group that put together the um, parade. Um, 
The, uh, another topic that came out with, uh, by uh, the uh, members at present is that uh, they wanted to have a way of responding to diversity issues in town as they uh, arise. Uh, so I'm going to just go over them and then maybe we can take each one uh, separately. Um, there was also a group uh, who wanted to see uh, the diversity in the town government and schools uh, uh, enhanced. You know, like, like you say, like everybody says, we have a really diverse town. Some people would like to see it reflected in the makeup of uh, town employees, school employees, the boards, the town meeting. Although town meeting has been improving quite a bit, I have seen a very positive change uh, right, on yep. the town meeting members. And then we have a steering committee, uh, sort of, which steering committee is also very new. Uh, so that, and then uh, we are here to solicit more members. So if anybody would like to join any one of those groups, any two of those groups, all of those groups, or if they want to start a new subcommittee, because if they have a area that they really like to work on, um, then uh, they can come. We need a, at least a you know, critical mass to get started on a, a, a new group. But um, so if anybody is interested in making a difference, you know, making this town as a more loving place, uh, need to call uh, the senior center, which is uh, 781 344 8882. And there's no experience needed. We take it doesn't matter if you've never joined a group before. It doesn't matter if you've joined a hundred groups before. If you are interested, you want to just hear some more about it, don't hesitate to give us a call um, ab about things. And this is just a starting place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean this is where we end. Um, but I think that as we as we move and develop, um, we think that it's really important for you know, short-term goals um, so that we could have a banner or um, a way that celebrates diversity in different things. Um, but we also want to think about long-term. How, how do we make differences? And I think that um, one of the things is that uh, a lot of people say, well, what do I have to offer? Um, why, would, why would somebody want me to be part of this committee? And what I would say to that, uh, and you guys please join in, is that everybody has a perspective, a story to share, um, an ability to, I'm raising kids, this is how I do it. Um, uh, we, had diver we were a really diverse community in another thing where I lived, um, and I want to recreate that. Everybody's experience is unique um, and um, of value to us. Mm -hmm. I see that as being really important too, Karen. And I'm just struck in my own experience of how, how much I've learned from other people just by listening to them. I think that listening is um, a skill that not many of us are good at today. A lot of us are just waiting for the other person to stop talking so you know we can jump in and, and put in our two cents. But I think working on our listening skills with one another, with whatever we bring to the table, I think is critically important. And I think that's how we get to know one another and I think that's what dispels the fear that we sometimes have for people who are different than we are. So no matter what, as Karen said, I will echo that, no matter what experience you've had or haven't had, you're welcome um, at our committee. Well, that's good information. My, um, you, you touched on, on my philosophy uh, with, with the involvement that I have with this show, which has been for years. It's always to say something nice. I know, Roy, I, and I always appreciate that. I, I um, learned that from my father-in-law, who has since passed away, when he used to say something to my mother-in-law, who was negative. Uh, he used to say, say something nice, Jeanette. And that, that was very important to me, and it's, it's put me where I am, mm -hmm. and thus my involvement with this, with this show. Um, and I think we've been pretty lucky so far. We've been able to get people into it. We're going to take a quick break. Um, we have some uh, announcements that we're going to make and then we'll come back. So stay tuned. Hi, it's Gary LaPierre and the crew wants to thank mm, 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 Maxie's Delicatessen. That's at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They're 781-341-1662. American Cancer Society, yes, they're looking for volunteers, drive cancer patients to and from their treatments. 1-800-ACS-6662. 
or just go to www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market, 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher. That's a 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels, just ask for Jessica. You'll find her at 781-344-8882, extension 2. Stoughton Penny Saver, our business is advertising your business, they tell us. 27 Rose Glen Street, Stoughton, 781-344-4833. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m., Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m., it's on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28. All comments and suggestions welcome. Contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Samaritans, they're at 41 West Street on the fourth floor in Boston, 02111. Their phone number is 617-536-2460. 24-hour helplines for Samaritans. And the number is 877-870-HOPE. That's 877-870-HOPE. 4673. Samaritans, you can find them at 800 252 teen. That's 252 8336. Or find them online at SamaritansHope.org. We'd like to tell you about the Hometown Business Show. That's another show that originates from the studio. It's uh, seen on Tuesdays at 11 in the morning, Wednesdays at 5 30 in the afternoon. Thursdays at 8 p.m., Sundays at 7 p.m. On, Com on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon 28. And they have new new uh, shows coming up occasionally. And we hope you, uh, if you have any ideas for a business that you'd like to see uh, spotlighted, let us know. Monday Night Bingo. This is something I'm particularly involved with. I occasionally go there and call and try to keep everybody happy. And uh, this week it uh, was a huge crowd. Uh, there's some big prizes to be won. The, the, the games are at the Ahava Torah Congregation, which is at 1179 Central Street in Stoughton. The doors open at 4.30 p.m. The games start at 6.30 p.m. We expect a huge crowd this week because we have two uh, progressives that are about to be won. I'm not sure whether it be this Monday or next Monday. Hopefully it will be in a few Mondays so we keep building up the crowd. Is it the $3,000? The $3,000 one and there's another one for $1,199. Um, it's it's quite a, it's quite exciting, and we have a lot of diversity. And everybody shares the chairs. <laughs> they Will they room. share the money? They they don't share the money, but they they <laughs> share the chairs and make room for all the new players, and we appreciate that. The Get Fresh, uh, Karen, Sharon uh, Fracken is back from her brief vacation. It's uh, Stoughton's own cooking show. We have new episodes in the works. Uh, those are seen on Comcast Nine and Verizon Twenty Eight. Monday at 5.30, Wednesday at 8 p.m., Thursday at 9 a.m., and Friday at 5 p.m. You watch the show, you learn how to cook. I might even do that because when it comes to cooking, I think it's, the term is two left thumbs or something. I don't know. I'm not from the cookers. And uh, the 5th Annual Ann Havlin Memorial Blood and Food Drive take place on Saturday, September 16th, 2017, from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., at the Immaculate Conception Church in Stoughton. For more information, email mollymills at mollyann.mills at gmail.com. And? Roy, uh, just to, to go back on your uh, uh, Sharon Fratkin, I'm a fan of hers, uh, the cooking uh, show. I wonder uh, if it would be possible to uh, bring some ethnic foods, uh, you know, bring uh, members from the community and uh, show how to cook the ethnic food. Do you know anybody and I'll that be, can I'll cook? Be, well, my mm -hmm. wife is a great cook, but I don't think she will show up. No. <laughs> well, a lot of people are uh, afraid of camera, shy of camera, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it'll be great uh, to show uh, different how to cook different ethnic foods. And I can assure you, I'll be there to sample the food. I'd sample too. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, you, you don't look like you've been sampling much food lately. <laughs> You've got to start eat, eating again. Lost what you probably have lost a hundred pounds. Yeah, I know you're not. I, telling I lost us. maybe five or ten pounds. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's let's get back to uh, the committees. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a committee on uh, one of the committees is called the response team. Reverend, you yes, um, I'm a member of that subcommittee that responds to um, diversity issues, 
And I felt drawn to that committee because of an experience I had about a year ago uh, with the Stoughton Clergy Association. Right after the um, shooting at that the Pulse nightclub in Orlando where all the um, LGBTQ people were, or many of them were, were killed, um, we decided, the clergy association that is, decided we needed to, to make a statement, to be a presence in the community, to show our support for those victims and their families. So within 48 hours, I think it was, we organized a vigil out in front of the Universalist Church in the center of town. Um, and we had many people from our clergy association that represent the various churches in town came and spoke. Um, and the response from the community was really overwhelming. Like I had people um, coming up to me afterwards, people in tears, who were so moved by the fact that someone cared about what they were going through. You know, the LGBTQ people are often marginalized, but yet here we were in the center of town lifting up this tragedy that had happened to, to the people in Orlando. And people were just incredibly touched and I think felt supported and um, by, by the town, by the clergy association and the people from the town who came. I think that whole area in front of the church was filled so that was so moving for me personally that, that when this subcommittee was formed, I said to myself, this is the one that I need to be on because mm -hmm. I think we need to be ready to, hopefully we won't need to respond in that sort of fashion going forward, but knowing that we can, I think is, uh, is important. Very good. Uh, I'm concerned with, with all the headlines about the radical Islamic militants uh, that the normal law-abiding citizens of that community, the Muslim community, and th there seem to be uh, more harassments going on of the people who are not radical, but just because they dress mm -hmm. differently, uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are those who group them all together. And, and I, I'm feeling pretty bad about that. Yeah. We all are. And, not, and nothing can be done, really, except I think, uh, from the top, it has to, it has to, uh, it has to be, a, there has to be a different message coming out well, uh, besides get them out of here or exactly. beat them up right. or whatever. And, and sometimes you can't wait for top down. Sometimes you have to wait, you have to do bottom up. Um, and that's one of the things I think that we're trying to do at, from our point of view. This is, seems like in the diversity group and the in inclusion group has really been this grassroots kind of building on its own. Um, and uh, the Youth Commission and the Council of Nation are trying to give it some structure, but people were already coming together um, to try to do that. And one of the things that we want to try to do is that, you know, um, what we know is that there's collective impact. So if you and me and Mary and Erdem, you know what I'm saying, like we all have the same ideas, but if we can get all of our arrows going together in one, uh, in one direction, yeah. the power of those arrows just becomes multiplied. Yeah. Um, and we want to make sure that we are doing that in a way that's constructive. So that's why we came up with kind of these um, three groups just to, to kind of start with because energy, because you only have so much energy. We only all, as a, as a group, we only have so much time. Um, so people who have passions in those different areas, um, like so Artem's done already has, um, is really interested in doing a lot of things around events, um, and he uh, and he's going to tell you a little bit about like the dance around the world that he organized um, and different things like that. But then, these three groups from this kind of February on is what, where we kind of um, what are you interested in? We've been asking people. We want to hear from people. What are you interested in? Where do you want to put the time? And these three groups are really the ones that kind of rose up from the. Um, the grassroots mm -hmm. areas. Um, what do you do? For, what do you do for PR? Uh, you're, you're talking about uh, the, they, they pick and choose uh, the, the reporters or the radio stations or the TV stations. They pick and choose the only the parts of the story that'll be mostly negative uh, because they want to sell papers. Um, so, so what do you do to get the the press uh, involved? I, I notice. A lot, uh, what I read is, is coming from the patch. Right. But how extensive is the patch uh, and how much of it is being read? Do you do, you do anything with the major outlets uh, to try to get them to cover your stuff? Yeah, well, we haven't yet. Do you know what I'm We haven't yet um, as far as some of those things. But I think that, again, it's that um, it's coming on community forum. It's, you know, making sure that we have a message that's positive that we want to get out. Um, 
That would be a good committee mm -hmm. for you to form as a mm -hmm. PR committee. Yeah, and so even just even having the good Are you good volunteering, works, Roy? Uh, I, I wish I had the time to do it, believe me. <laughs> my um, schedule, it's, it's difficult. Well, and I think that, and, and the fact that we, if we could call you up, Roy, and say, hey, could, could you put a show on about this? Or could you do these things? Um, Absolutely. And, no problem at all, anytime. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, I think that it's really important. And I think that it's really important just to, um, you know, for us to have a Facebook page, for us to have, um, to put up the pictures that we're, of the things that we're doing. Um, uh, one of the things that we need, that we're in the process of doing is, just figuring out all the great stuff that Stoughton is already doing, mm -hmm. um, so we're not recreating the wheel. Um, uh, that there's already groups in the high school um, that are talking about cultural issues and diversity. Um, the, the fruition group, all right, so we don't need to start, they're already doing good work, we just need to support them. Um, the clergy association is already doing good work, we need to support them. Um, the, you know, uh, we're, al we're already trying to do these things. And if people know something has worked in the past, we will happily borrow their ideas mm -hmm. um, as well. Like I know that we have some programming coming up um, at, at your church, Mary, in September. Yes, we're having a racial justice training in September. We have some representatives from my denomination, the United Church of Christ, who are going to come to our church on uh, Pierce Street to do a two-hour basic training on racial justice. Um, right now, I believe the date is October 8th, and we will definitely be publicizing that as it gets closer and disseminating more information. But a lot of people have expressed interest in that training, and it's, it's not um, it restricted to any particular denomination. It's for everybody in the mm -hmm. community. So I look forward to that as being a way. I know I need more education on um, racial we, justice. We all do. So I think we programs like that will be invaluable. Are you involved with other communities with this uh, this type of well, work? I think that it's. Um, uh, I think we are trying to keep it from like Stoughton based, but at the same time, um, people who might live and share about work in Stoughton might be involved, or people who you know something like. Um, like one of the things that people have seen um, in common is that they really like the flags around the world that Sharon has in there. With the exception of one flag, I heard. Um, Which one? Uh, one of them that they put up uh, was was uh, really causing a ruckus. Well, I, I, uh, it might have been from Iran or something. I think it was Syria. Syria, yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Right. Was yeah. it the wrong flag? No, it was their flag. The Syria. They just uh, ISIS flag. Were, uh, probably weren't very comfortable with the Syrian yeah, flag being. Uh, yeah, one I of the look. Group. I looked into the group and Sharon. Uh, it seems like the town doesn't have uh, uh, much. Uh, to do with it, it came from the Rotary, uh, Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. They uh, funded it. They came with the idea, and they were allowed to post their flags. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think so. I'm re trying to reach out to them so to see if we can get more. I think if we could join forces with Sharon, community level uh, forces, I think that that will be great. A good but one to, would be although it would be a lot of work would be Brockton. Yeah, mm -hmm. and community, I mean, community change happens kind of at, at, at those levels too, but I think that we need to be able to, to borrow from it, um, uh, borrow from other communities, see what's working in their community. If they're doing something that we want to copy or go in with, uh, we, we, should be open, we should be open to that too because, you know, when we talk about inclusi inclusivity, we don't want to exclude people who are not <laughs> from Stoughton either. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we are staying local um, and making sure that we're focusing on our local issues uh, that, are, that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, as we do community change, it's really, you know, when we talk about, so Mary talked a little bit about the subcommittee that she's on. The one that, another one is about making sure that boards and commissions and government um, reflect the diversity. How can you do that? Well, I think one, it's about um, uh, different things like that. So one of the things I talked about is how do we get people to even know, you know, for some people, even what town meeting representation is or how government works. So it's about educating people and really having them believe in themselves that they can be leaders and that they know how to be leaders or um, just making sure that you know when we put out notices for town meeting reps, maybe we're doing it in different languages. Um, so we don't have a we don't have a, a set plan of what that will look like, but we need to know, you know, boards and commissions like my boards, the youth commission board and the council on aging board. Um, I'm very lucky 
to have um, on the Council on Aging Board a very diverse group of people. Um, but they all speak English, right? Uh, they do all speak English, but I have, uh, have other people who, they also, they also speak other languages. Well, that's fine, but as long as the bottom line is English is spoken here. Uh, I, I believe that it's got to be, there's got to be a common language. I, I, but I don't think that we should dismiss people because their English is not that No, I'm not great. saying dismiss them. I'm saying encourage them to learn the language. Yeah, I, mean, right. I, I work in, uh, in an area in Boston, and there's a lot of foreigners doing the work that I, the kind of work that I do. And when they're together, they're all speaking a foreign language. Right. When, then, when I, I believe that somehow we should all be encouraged to speak a common English language. The others, you know, you, you protect. You don't want to lose the, the ethnicity or the, or the background that you have by speaking a different language. But I think in the common area, personally, uh, English should be the prominent, uh, the primary language. Right. And, you know, so in like... In this country. Uh, and we could get in a debate about that, but like, so in Europe, like, many people, except for Great Britain, they they learn three and four languages before the time that you know what I'm like so it's a right. it's an investment in education um, that not only are we learning other that we're learning other languages um, as well and but I think that one of the things um, when you talk about that right like like a really th a thing that people don't know too much about is that Stoughton has this fantastic free adult basic education program um, mm -hmm. at the high school where we partner with um, uh, Massasoit. And we have 90 to 100 people um, who, you know, after working, you know, a 50-hour work week and kids are coming to classes three hours, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, six hours a week, plus another three hours of homework to learn English. Good. Uh, and so, and, when, and why they want to learn English, you know, are such personal and touching stories. Like one lady um, who I know wanted to learn English so she could help her daughter with her homework mm -hmm. um, so she could so that they could read the flyer that the PTO sent home um, those are good reasons um, all, all are good reasons and um, uh, so my mom just going back to being first generation my mom uh, has been here for 46 years um, she sounds like she got off the boat yesterday um, and literally uh, she can be in a restaurant and people will say oh you're here on vacation uh, hmm. Um, and that's just an accent. But she speaks English, doesn't she? But she was lucky because she, because English was her language to come in with. But 45 years in this country has not softened her accent uh, in any way, shape, or form, even though she's got three American kids, uh, uh, a nice social life, you know what I'm saying, like all of those things. Um, so I think that people, when you talk about that, I agree, because pe I think that English, that people have to have an understanding of the language, but I think that we have, I think people have to also recognize how hard it is to learn that language. If you're um, an airline pilot, I think the common language from all the different countries is English. Uh, and, they, and, they all have to speak, to, I mean, you right, gotta be able to right. tell them what to do or how to and get we're, there. And we're lucky that that's, that, yeah. that English, that we happen to be in the majority, Correct. We, we, that we are in the country where in, that the majority of the world is learning to speak. I spent, as, as I'm sure you're aware, I spent a lot of time in the Caribbean living in Aruba for several years in business. And when the kids graduate from school down there, they speak four languages. Right. English, Spanish, Dutch, and Papiamento. And Papiamento was the dialect of the Netherlands Antilles. Right. But they, they, uh, they speak English, and, and you can watch Xander, Xander Bogatz speaks pretty good English. But I think that that's, and I think that that's, I think that we, you know, and, and it's easy for me when we talk about diversity, that um, as a majority, like I'm, I'm a white, well-educated female, um, doing something like when we talk about power and privilege, we come from those areas that, um, that me getting ahead is easy because I speak the language, um, I know the culture, all of those things. I think that, but as a rule, I think we have to work, figure out, and I think that that's where the diversity group comes in, is just to just to hear those people's stories about like, this is how hard it was for me, and I was able to do it. This is what I'm doing to make it easier for other people who are coming here. Mm -hmm. um, this is these are the things like, and for for those voices to be heard in government on the boards and commissions. This is what's important to my family and my community or my sub-community um, is the potholes or the, um, you know, whatever 
the, the playgrounds, the, um, the ability to walk down the street, all of those things are important for um, diversity. And I think that that's one of those things that the group is doing, is just to, to do awareness of all the great things that um, being from different cultures um, provide sure. for, for a community. I'll piggyback on uh, what Karen said. I find um, I have seen many uh, instances of uh, uh, you know hate or bigotry within Stoughton and outside. You know it exists everywhere, and uh, I often uh, sit down and reflect. You know why this guy that I respect so much think this way in a certain way, and it's always uh, my conclusion that it's because that person doesn't know. Uh, doesn't know that culture, and that's why he's afraid. That's why he has uh, prejudice against that. Right. So within our group, especially the activities group, uh, we are in a tune that uh, you know we are trying to, without re let making them letting them realize that they are being educated, put together some activities so that you know they work shoulder to shoulder with other people mm -hmm. be shoulder to shoulder with other people from other uh, places and uh, be educated that way uh, you know removing the fear and bigotry from the uh, ground mm -hmm. up and having fun and yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and, and appreciating uh, the value like Karen uh, mentioned um, um, uh, the dance around the world pro world program we had this event at the senior center. We brought in uh, three musicians and uh, one a really good instructor. And uh, we had people, uh, kids, uh, adults, uh, really old senior citizens. And uh, we started out with a Jewish song and Jewish dance. So we all learned that. And then uh, there were dances from uh, Christian countries. And uh, I think there was a dance from a Muslim country. Everybody had a ball, and uh, you know they didn't realize because uh, in the media they just see the same images over and over again, mm -hmm. and they develop a fear. So uh, you know we are looking for activities. How do we wipe out this fear mm -hmm. among the religions, mm -hmm. among the like in uh, uh, you know in uh, middle school, for example, or the elementary school? The kids can be uh, so brutal without realizing that they are brutal. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like one of the common uh, things they say to each other is, uh, you know, you're gay. I mean, in elementary school, what's your gay mean? So, uh, you know, we need to educate the family so they educate their kids because school can only go so far in uh, educating their... Right, we need to, but how yeah. do we? Well, I, I think that's, well, I just think that examining, la just even examining language that we use. Um, so. Just to Jimson, like, so why do we call, think about some of the words that we use, like just the word paddy wagon. Jimson, like, so if you go back to the origins of paddy wagon. Irish. Irish, uh, but it's about p putting them in jail. Jimson, like, so when, oh, the Irish, when the Irish were immigrants, um, no Irish need apply. Mm -hmm. um, was was you know, like, you know, just because the color, people's color of skin doesn't, doesn't um, uh, white skin doesn't make, sh you not have prejudices. No Irish need to apply. So in the paddy wagon was about putting drunk Irish people in jail. Mm -hmm. um, so just even the art, like you're saying, like, the, like people use words all the time that they don't necessarily know the full meanings of or how it, how it became a de derogatory thing. Um, and I think, again, just going back to it, I think that um, I, I, it starts with education. We had this fantastic reading day at the Daw School um, a couple of weeks ago and they were using the D for diversity. Uh, and I got to read to a third grade classroom, and it was fantastic, and it was about um, a family whose grandparents were from India, uh, and they talked about um, like all the different foods that they ate and, diff and different things like that. But then when we went around the classroom, so many of the kids, they had vuvus and vovos, they had nanas, they had um, all, Anything that a grandparent could be called mm. was part of that classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they talked about the food. And so for them, for those kids, acceptance and tolerance was just like math. Um, and so it's about educating. It's about um, being willing to do things differently. And I think that, I think Stoughton's doing a good job of it. I think we, part of it, when you talk about PR, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Making sure that we're 
telling the good stories, making sure that we are, um, can we bring in a speaker to educate somebody? Can we um, highlight when, we, when people get their citizenships here in America? Um, can we have a, that might be a celebration. Mm. Can we make sure that the selectmen are acknowledging the people who get their citizenships? Mm -hmm. Because once you're, you know saying, like the, road, the path to citizenship, many, people don't realize it, their knowledge of American history yeah. has to, you know, it's probably done for me. All right, well, listen, we've run out of time. Oh, my goodness. It's hard to believe. We thought we'd maybe fill up a half a minute, half a show, but uh, no problems in doing the whole thing. Uh, I want to thank um, Karen uh, from the Stoughton Youth Commission, Reverend Mary from the United Church of Christ, and Dr. Erdem Ural um, from Stoughton. <laughs> and uh, Roy, we, we, we forgot you. to thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity. We thank you so Roy. much. Thank you. Anytime. This, thank you. this was great having you here, and I look forward to the next time. I also want to take this time to thank Leo McGowan, who uh, is making us hey. all look pretty here. Uh, Gina Ko, who's pushing the right buttons and making us look pretty here. Um, Dave uh, That's Young. That's hard work. <laughs> I'm glad he wasn't around with the camera at the beginning of the show. Mike Hammond for doing the work he did, CJ and Jeff, Jeff Pickett. Uh, thank you all very much for watching the show and get involved. Contact the Stoughton Youth Commission um, and we'll have him on again and we'll continue this dialogue because it was quite interesting. And uh, this is Roy Cohen saying I enjoyed being the host and uh, we'll see you again. Thank you.